Welcome, I'm Dr. Wesley Long. I'm the medical director of microbiology at Houston Methodist Hospital. And I'm here to talk to you about uh, tips for scientists who want to talk to the media. So you may be asking yourself right off the bat, why would I want to talk to the media? There's a lot of physicians, a lot of scientists uh, who just flat out are skeptical of the media, don't want to talk to reporters, get worried about being misinterpreted, get worried about uh, perhaps feeding into a hype machine or having your research mischaracterized. And so I'm here to give you some tips on how you can talk to the media and be successful at getting your message across and at having successful interactions that'll benefit both the public and your own uh, research. So one of the reasons I think we should all be talking to the media is I think science uh, communication, or SciComm as I call it, is now more important than ever. I think the pandemic, if anything, showed us that uh, there's a tremendous amount of bad information at the ready uh, for people to consume. And so it's our duty, I believe, as experts to uh, provide good information and provide our expertise to the public uh, so that they get, have a source of trusted uh, information that uh, they can uh, benefit from and use to counteract all the misinformation and disinformation that's out there. So I do think it's a duty of ours as scientists and physicians to, to do that communication. I also think that as researchers, as scientists, as microbiologists, there's some secondary gain to be had or benefits to our own research and just publicizing it to the public, helping the public realize that the research we do, the work we do is important and beneficial to society at large. All of those are secondary benefits from us being out there, putting ourselves out there as, as experts. So I want to start off by telling you a story and how I got into this uh, media uh, interactions that I've gotten into over the pandemic. This is a still shot from a video I made in January of 2020. The hospital PR uh, department reached out to me and said, uh, you know, we're making videos with a few of the experts from the hospital to talk about this new coronavirus. Uh, would you be willing to do that? And I said, yes. And so this is back in January 2020. I had just taken over as medical director. My predecessor had been the medical director for 54 years at Houston Methodist and somehow had the foresight to retire the same week a pandemic uh, started. I still give him a hard time about that, but I had just taken, I saw boxes in my office I haven't unpacked. Um, but this was really the first video I made and I had no real prior experience to working with the media before I made this video for PR. Um, but I'm here to tell you your PR department is your friend and they can provide a lot of training, a lot of help to help you prepare yourself for these media interactions. And there's a wide variety of media that you can engage with. So I'm going to talk a little bit about TV specific, but there's also radio, print, online, podcasts. I would lump all those together with sort of the same skills, the same tips we're going to talk about today. So that video very quickly led into this. So the next thing I knew after doing the video for the hospital, getting a few local media requests, I started getting national media requests from pretty much every major network, Telemundo and Univision. I actually just did a local Univision interview at 10.15 this morning from Zoom uh, for one of the rooms here. So it kind of becomes a snowball. As you start interacting with the media, you'll start getting better at it. You'll start getting more requests. They'll start asking for you by name. Um, and really what this all came about from was the power of saying yes. And so very early in the pandemic, our CEO, Mark Boom, uh, gave forth to the physicians and leadership. He wanted us to be saying yes to media requests. He wanted us to be out there as experts, putting out good information to the public to combat a lot of the misinformation that was out there. So ultimately I just started saying yes to every request that I got. And the more I said yes, the more requests came in. And again, you start saying the same thing over and over and over. It gets very, very easy. So talking to the media is a skill. It's a skill you can train for and it's a skill you can practice. I'm gonna give you some tips on how to be successful. So you need to say yes. But then immediately I'm going to tell you, you need to know when to say no. So you need to have a good grasp of what your area of expertise is. Because you may get asked to talk about things that are not your area of expertise. And it's perfectly fine to pass on those. And even better, to recommend a colleague or amplify a colleague's voice if they're an expert in that area. perfect example I'll give was I got contacted about doing an interview uh, about an unfortunate uh, concert tragedy in Houston where some people were crushed in a crowd. Uh, not my area of expertise. You know, I'm not a trauma surgeon, I'm not an ER doctor, I'm a clinical microbiologist, but I was able to amplify a couple of my colleagues from the ER and talk to the reporter and PR and say, why don't you talk to these people? They can help you. They did the interview, it was great. So you need to say yes, but know when to say no. Um, your PR department, again, is your friend. I've said this before. Uh, PR can give you media training. They can help you write press releases. Uh, they can help train you how to interact with the press. They can help pitch you to different media outlets for story ideas. Uh, so they are definitely, um, they're there to help you. They're there to help the institution. Um, if you get a media request from a reporter, you're probably going to want to run it through the PR department. 
one thing that'll happen is if you start doing more media, and especially if you're active on Twitter, you'll start getting reporters coming into your DMs or messaging you, can you talk? And I always message back and say, I'm happy to talk, let's run this through PR and get there okay, and then we can, we can have that conversation. There's a lot of media and SciComm training. ASM has some webinars coming up uh, on communication training for advocacy and other purposes. So look for things like that if you want to get that training. The most important thing when you get a media request is to prepare yourself. So you want to know, there's a few questions. If you have a good PR department, they'll already have asked, but you can ask yourself, you know, what's the reporter's story? What's the story they're writing? What is the question they're trying to answer? In, in particular, what do they want to talk to you about? What is your expertise going to add to that story? And so once you know those questions, you can start thinking of, you know, what are the potential questions you're going to be asked? What are your answers? What are some follow-up questions you may be asked? And really start developing a set of talking points. And you can even share those talking points. Sometimes you'll find you're sharing them amongst your institution to make sure that everybody's on the same page, that you're getting out a consistent message from experts from the institution. Um, and you need to learn with those talking points to think and talk in sound bites. This is incredibly true of television. So you have to be clear and concise. You have to avoid the use of jargon. You have to think of talking like you're talking to a lay person you care about, a family member you care about, trying to explain something to them, not a colleague or a fellow scientist. Um, it's really key, especially in television. They really they go for those sound bites. So you need to practice being very clear and concise and giving very short bullet point talking points and hitting those talking points in the interview over and over and over again. When you're actually talking to the reporter, you need to stay on message. You want to try not to speak off the cuff. Uh, speaking off the cuff can sometimes get you into trouble. Um, I like to say, we like to say, nothing is ever off the record. Uh, assume that anything you say to a reporter can and will wind up in print or on uh, television. So you have to be very careful, try not to speak extemporaneously or speak off the cuff. Uh, I try to avoid booking interviews late in the afternoon because I tend to be a little bit more tired, I tend to be a little bit more relaxed, and I tend to sort of wax poetic or say things that maybe I wish I hadn't. So you just have to know yourself and just try to stay on message, try to stay on your talking points, and, uh, and try not to speak off the cuff. And again, anything you say to a reporter can and will likely end up, end up in print or uh, on camera. You need to provide context when you answer questions. So you're giving those clear, concise answers, but at the same time, oftentimes a reporter will ask you a question, especially true in television, and you're going to answer it. But when they air it, they're not going to air the reporter's question. Uh, and so there's, if you say something like, oh, I think it's terrible, or oh, I think that's dangerous, or I think that's bad, one, your answer is not going to be clear, and two, if you're dealing with a media outlet that is less scrupulous, uh, they can then take your comment and take it out of context and insert it after any assertion they want to make. So you always want to try to couch your answer with some piece of context or relevance. So you can say, you know, instead of saying uh, it's more transmissible, it's more contagious, you'd say, we're concerned about the Omicron variants because uh, they seem to be more contagious, they seem like they might do this or that, versus just saying it's more contagious, it's more transmissible, etc. Because then that can be plucked out and used um, in a variety of ways. It's also okay to say you don't know the answer to a question. It's better than, uh, you know, saying the wrong thing or misstating or saying something that's not factual. It's fine to say, I don't know the answer to a question, I haven't read that study. Um, it's happened to me several times. Having to be live on MSNBC, they asked me about a study, and I said, I'm sorry, I haven't had a chance to read that study yet. Um, and if you get asked a question that you're specifically in PR, you've decided not to talk about, or you don't want to talk about, uh, our stock answer is, I can't speak to that. So it's a very sort of short, concise way to say, you can't speak to it. Um, it's, it's not as confrontational. If you say no comment, it sounds like you're trying to hide something. So I can't speak to that as just a very clear, short, concise way to say you're not going to talk about that topic. Uh, this is an example of something I did recently for the AP. I just want to throw in that talking to wire service reporters like the AP, Reuters, etc. is fantastic because it then gets picked up by multiple outlets around the globe and you get huge viewership out of those, more so than just doing a local affiliate. Sometimes you may be lucky enough to get written questions from a reporter and be able to provide written responses. This is more true of freelancers, online reporters working for websites like Healthline, etc. Um, that's the exception, uh, not necessarily the rule. So if you're talking to a newspaper reporter, other reporters don't expect to get the ability to look at what you said or edit your comments. That's really uncommon. But in online outlets with those freelancers, it's a little bit more common because they generally want help fact-checking make sure they got it right. Uh, live interviews can be scary, but they're also fantastic because they can't sound bite you. So I, live interviews are some of my favorite interviews to do because they can't shut me up. And I can basically answer, uh, you know, give the context I want. I don't have to worry about me taking out of context. I don't have to worry about 
um, you know, anything I say not being used. I will warn you, especially in television, you're going to do a 15-minute Zoom interview, and it's probably going to translate into about 15 seconds of on-air quote or on-air time. So don't be disheartened by that. It's just the nature of the business. You may talk to a newspaper reporter for half an hour and wind up with one or two pull quotes um, that are uh, you know, used in the story. So I just want to leave you with uh, three basic closing points. Again, uh, just for media, being engaged with media, talk to your PR department, Train and prepare yourself. Prepare for media engagement. Prepare for interviews. Remember, nothing is ever off the record. Anything you say, it can and will wind up in print or on air. And then, just please, I'd urge all of you as experts uh, to say yes. Please get out there. Put yourselves out there. Work with your PR department. Find those engagements because uh, right now the public needs our expert voices uh, now more than ever. Thank you.